My name is Linda Souza, and I'm a victim of family court corruption in Oceanside, California. My testimony of the government corruption within the courts of San Diego County in California. Hi America, I am Linda Souza, 49 years old and a mother of three beautiful girls. I have a 28 year old daughter named Amber, my 15 year old daughter is named Montana, and my 13 year old daughter is named Shelby. And the two oldest or the two youngest have Asperger's and autism. My girls and I are just one piece to this government corruption within our county courthouses that is going on. My place of corruption and where I reside is Oceanside, California. It's the county of San Diego. This is our story. On April 17, 2009, I was feeling very alone and was depressed being a single mom of two autistic girls. So I had shared I was depressed and needed someone just to talk to with me. So I had asked my youngest behaviorist who was in the home at the time. I had shared with her some superficial cuts I had made on my own arm. She then stated she needed to call the police as she was a mandated reporter. But I pleaded with her just to talk with me and my girls never seen or heard anything. The police then arrived and placed me under a 5150, a 72 hour hold. CPS then came and took custody of my two younger girls whom live with me and they were 10 and 12 at the time. I spent three days in the psychiatric hospital. It was Tri-City Hospital and I was drugged and abused. That's when the social worker came and took a statement from me being so drugged, I don't remember anything I said. Then I was cleared to leave. I was then appointed counsel Berta McKinnon, who ultimately lost my girls to the county of San Diego by not filing an appeal for me and based on two psyche vows I was ordered to take by the county, so those sealed my fate in not being offered reunification services. I was diagnosed with Asperger's at 46 and with major depression, a piece to the autism, but very low functioning autism. My girls were placed apart from each other in separate foster homes and they called it a permanent placement plan. My older daughter, Montana, who was 12 at the time, was placed in a same sex household and being raised in a Christian home, being highly gifted, she figured it all out on her own when this couple had started exposing their lifestyle to on her. My daughter was diagnosed as depressed. Placed on medication, she threatened to run away if not placed back home with her mom. She was moved eventually, but not back home where she wanted and the abuse had just begun. Thanksgiving of 2009, she was allowed to fly to her grandparents' house. The family were all told she would have an escort there and back by the social worker Katie Zomerdyke. But to my shock, I was notified by my mother. My daughter was unattended, flying solo, and had been left for a, a layover at LAX for two hours. A child with autism and very naive and had never flown before. If she had been kidnapped, raped, and murdered, would CPS been held accountable for the loss of another foster child? In my care, she would have never flown alone. Then in April of 2010, when my daughter, Montana, was 13 years old, I received a phone call from social worker Joelle Grove, stating to me, as Montana's mother, I must inform you that your daughter was sexually assaulted by an unknown person after being allowed by the agency to an attend an unsupervised pool party at one of her teacher's house. I later found out this very teacher was posting on my daughter's Facebook page. She was allowed to have as well as another 50 year old man who is an employee of San Pasquale Academy where my daughter is placed. I had asked Joelle, did you call the police and file the report? She stated back, no, 
We don't know the entire story. It was I who called Escondido police and filed a report. The police officer later called me telling me he went to talk to Montana, but she declined, so there is nothing that they could do. Then after this assault, her and I had a visit, and in questioning my daughter about the assault, I was ordered by Karen Johnson, supervisor at SPA, San Pasquale Academy, that if I mentioned it again, the visit would be terminated. Now due to my daughter being so brainwashed and alienated away from me, from any kind of a relationship, my daughter has blocked me from her Facebook page and chooses not to have any contact with me in the last three and a half years. It absolutely breaks my heart as we were once very close. Because I have had very little contact, I am not sure what else she may have endured in foster care. She has now taken to over 17 rated movies at 13 by her foster parents and has been given such freedom to roam the mall and other places. She dyes her hair and sadly never attends church as we all did as a family. My girls like me all have a true medical condition called intolerance to wheat, gluten, milk, soy, and eggs. And both my younger two were on a special diet for five years before foster care. And by avoiding all these foods that healed their bleeding intestines that showed blood in their stool. My youngest had seizures and vomiting, muscle aches, eczema, all over their body. Insomnia and severe behaviors of biting, spitting, kicking, screaming, my youngest had. I gave my kids, my girls, digestive enzymes to help digest food as autistics lack this enzyme as well as probi probiotics to heal the yeast in their guts that make them so ill. Now they are both medically sick due to the county not caring to look at doctor's reports and evidence I submitted to them and to the court concerning my daughter's medical condition. Instead, they have been fed food that harms them now three and a half years and placed my youngest, who is 13, on four different psychi psychiatric drugs to control the very behaviors the food causes as it acts just like opiates in an autistic's brain. And she is now craving wheat and sugar, a sign she has yeast in her gut that I had once healed. I gave both their social workers, Angel Nelson and John Freestat, all the documentation they needed to prevent my girls from being medically abused. Surely my youngest is now having petite grand mal seizures as it was documented in her EEGs before and showing no seizures after I had implemented the diet for five years. They had stopped. I even gave them evidence that it's been proven the diet is beneficial to most autistic individuals. As I now, I live with the same disorder and have helped myself as well as the girls. The children's attorney, Jessica Smith, has also had all this information in her file, but has done nothing to protect, advocate for my girls in any way. In fact, she sides with the county all the time and claims to speak to her clients and state stuff I know my girls would not agree to. She is a part of the Dependency Legal Group of San Diego. In May of 2010, after having six appointed attorneys through the DLG, I had received an email from a supervisor over all of the attorneys named Kevin Lemieux after I had written him stating my dissatisfaction with them and how my case had been handled. Then Kevin wrote me back and said, Linda, all of my attorneys agree that you have not been treated fairly. It does seem the social worker has it out for you. I then contacted his boss, Robert Galini of the DLG to express my concerns to Kevin's email, only to be ignored. My youngest daughter, Shelby, who was 10 when taken, was born to me on December the 11th of 98 and was a four pound premature infant. 
I was able to bring her home on Christmas Day after her 15-day stay in ICU, but sadly placed in a very abusive home in Chula Vista by CPS by a woman known as Annie. And I later found out she knew Polinsky Children's Center and quoted, I was only doing them a favor by taking your daughter. My daughter, who is moderately autistic, language delayed, and considered legally blind, and also has mild cerebral palsy. She was a victim every day of physical abuse and torment by a woman not certified to care for her known as Lola. Each visit entailed the horrific abuse I documented of teeth marks embedded in my child's tiny arm. She stated Lola bit me, and I don't know why. There were smashed toes, smashed fingers, she was shoved into stairs for letting out their dog and was tormented by Lola throwing her clothes all over the room and claiming Shelby had done it and made the mess and made her pick it up. Whatever else went on, I did not witness, but she was terrified of that home. She had learned the word whore from Annie's 16-year-old daughter. She had bruising all over her tiny body. I even sent $200 of gluten-free food down and my daughter said she threw it away and told me if I don't eat what they eat, I get nothing. I called the ombudsman every day complaining until finally Annie said she wanted her out of her home. Then in October 20, 2010, a falsified report was written up about me. I had pulled my youngest daughter, Shelby, by the arm. Despite emergency room reports stating nothing found, not even a mark was noted, but because they can get away with it, I was then alienated away from my precious daughter, not seeing her one year and five months. Not even a phone call either. This was my four pound baby I brought home. Then after two denied appeals and only one by the grace of God, did I get to see her again. Only once a month, even though I turned into the courts, all I have done on my own. I found a crisis home to live in for two weeks to better understand my own disability of Asperger's and depression, having therapy twice a day and medication. I learned a lot and, and completed it and showed proof to the court. I then found and signed up for a six-week parenting class, which I, I completed with proof of certification and turned that in the court. I was the only one in there that was not court appointed to go. I signed up for a weekend seminar at San Diego State University, a 65-mile round trip, but completed it with a certificate and turned it into the court as well. I then found on my own and went to three different psychologists until I found CARES, Center for Autism Research and Evaluation Services. I started seeing Dr. Alan Lincoln, PhD, and Dr. Catherine Pedri Pedgriff, PhD. I seen Dr. Lincoln for therapy and Dr. Pedgriff for cognitive behavior therapy. I attended there for one year and six months driving 73.5 miles round trip every week. I finally received a letter for the court from Dr. Lincoln stating my diagnosis, my diagnosis were correct made by Dr. Stubbs, the social s services ordered me to take, but it, that it was a grave misrepresentation of my disability as I had 99% normal IQ. But even with this letter, I was still ruled against by the county and court and Commissioner Michael Emhoff ordered them to remain in long-term care. I then again, I took a letter from my own family doctor of how impressed she was with my mood change and the fact that I have now lost 80 pounds and showed signs of being ill and remained out of the hospital and no harm to myself in almost four years since the girls were taken. She also noted the fact that there again, that the improvement was so great that I was taken off of high blood pressure medicine I'd been on over 12 years. 
and off of um, um, medicine for diabetes as well. The court took it, the letter, but made no change for me either, only complimenting on the weight loss. Then, early on, my parents and adult daughter, Amber, 28, both requested having custody of my girls. My parents' home passed not once, but twice, as did their fingerprints and background checks that they paid for to be done. They didn't get the girls. Though, and we're told by social worker Martha McKenzie, you don't believe what we believe, and you're Linda's parents, so we don't think you'll follow the rules. Then my adult daughter tried from Washington State with the ICPC interstate transfer they had started. Her apartment passed, as did her fingerprints and background check, and then to her surprise, the county stopped dead on, and she was told by social worker John Freestat that you're close with your mother and she flies up often to see you in Washington, so we're not sending you the kids. Social Services' very own handbook states, quote, family first, unquote, as does the California Welfare and Institution Code 361.3 and Section 16002 for siblings to get them. In February of 2010, I lost my Section 8 housing I'd had for 22 years because the county refused to turn, return my girls, and the county took more than half of my income when they took the girls. So I became homeless with my service dog, Lily Mae, for five long months, and I was forced to live in my car. <coughs> During this time, I had gallbladder surgery, but had to return to my car to recover. Having no bathroom facility at 4 a.m. often made me cry due to such difficulty and hardship. In May of 2010, after having six court-appointed attorneys through the DLG, Dependency Law Group of San Diego, I received an email from Supervisor Kevin Lemieux after I stated my dissatisfaction with them and how they were handling my case. And he wrote that he agreed, Linda, the attorneys all agree that you have not been f treated fairly. I then contacted again the boss, Robert Galini, at the DLG to express my concern and for him to help me, but it was all again ignored. In January of 2012, I filed a motion to ask to be appointed legal counsel, but Commissioner Michael Inhofe denied me that motion, stating to me, quote, Miss Souza, as I have stated before, you're very articulate and intelligent, so you can represent yourself, unquote. I was in such shock, I asked him to repeat what he had said, and he did. I can act and practice as an attorney in government courtroom without years of schooling, but I can't parent my children I raised since birth, I caught this all on audio digital device. March 2011, I was held in contempt for a blog that I posted, but they said it was my blog and I was threatened with jail time if I didn't keep quiet about my case. So instead I was placed on three years probation by the courts. So my civil right to freedom of speech has been so violated. June 2012, I filed my motion to subpoena the two autism doctors I had seen, Dr. Alan Lincoln for therapy and Dr. Catherine Pedgriff for cognitive behavior therapy from CARES. But my motion was again denied by Commissioner Michael Imhoff from the Vista County Courtroom 9. So since all of this corruption, abuse of power, child endangerment, discrimination of my disability, alienating a parent to my civil right to parent my own biological children, slander, deception, brainwashing, and all else they do to good families, I wrote to the ACLU and they declined to help. I filed two discrimination suits against the County of San Diego and the state of California. Again, denied see they denied seeing it that way. I wrote my local senator, Bill Horn, twice, but was ignored. Then I filed complaints 
at county and state level with the Obed Obudsman with no help there. I even contacted Sean Calloway from Washington, D.C. that distributes the funds to disability rights in California. As I wrote a letter to Alba Gomez, my youngest daughter Shelby's advocate, and to her attorney, Megan Chambers, of the Regional Center of California, because my daughter's been a client, explaining my daughter needs a voice due to her medical neglect and her disability that impacts her enough not to advocate for herself. And they are who is supposed to look out for the rights of those disabled. And our clients, as my youngest has been since she was born, but again got a letter saying, quote, sorry, Miss Souza, we cannot assist you with any legal help, unquote. Then I continued to try and get CARES to help me, and it was, too, all ignored, even though they are to better the lives of those impacted with autism. I even wrote the president with no response. I wrote the director twice of social services and got a letter from his assistant stating, there is nothing we can do. You must go through the courts. I wrote to Terry Figueroa of the North County Times. She even came out to the courthouse and shot pictures of me protesting alone in front of the courts with my sign. She never wrote about my story in the newspaper. Channel 10 News in San Diego started my story and even interviewed me and my former attorney, Carrie Mar Marchant, who also has Asperger's but it was never aired. I filed a letter with Judge Katz that seats above Imhoff, but it was referred to me to the presiding judge, Rob Trentico Robert Trentacosta, and he wrote back telling me to file my complaint at state level in San Francisco, which I did. And all they did was deny my motion as well, basing it as, quote, untimely, unquote. I have written so many people to help us and just to be ignored by the world, it's a very harsh lump to swallow as a mother who is desperate to save her children from a life of abuse and neglect, torment and alienating them from their entire family. I am a very good mother with high morals and Christian values. I instilled in each of my children that were my precious gifts from my awesome Savior Jesus Christ. I deserve my family reunited and this corruption exposed. These are the ones that have been involved in my case for the last three and a half years. This has been going on. Commissioner Michael Imhoff that resides at the Fista County Courthouse. Barry Fox is a supervisor at social services. Stephen Wells was a social worker in the beginning. Katie Zomerdyke was a social worker in the beginning. Martha McKenzie was a social worker in the beginning. Dorothy Milia was the supervisor at social services who initially took my children and stated that I would probably get them back. John Freestat is the current social worker. Angel Nelson is the current social worker at San Pasquale Academy where my 15-year-old uh, daughter resides. Karen Johnson is the supervisor at San Pasquale Academy. And Rex Sheridan is a psychologist at SPA. And they were there the day that this false report was written up and evidently confided that that's what they believed happened. So now I would like to share some quick pictures if I could. This is my two beautiful girls. Montana and Shelby Souza, who are both on the autistic spectrum, and that I healed their, their, their guts and all their medical problems, and that state is denying them the food that they need. This is a picture when I protested out in front of the county courthouse in Vista all alone, and I went on a starvation hunger strike. It again was ignored. And this is another picture showing the courthouse name. I stood there for over two days and got so sunburned and ate nothing for two straight days. Last, 
I would like to read a short letter that was given to the court by my then 12-year-old uh, daughter. It was dated August the 18th, 2009. They were taken in April. This is her voice. I'm tired of my voice not being heard. I would really like to go home where I belong. You guys don't seem to get that my mom has never physically, emotionally, or mentally hurt me or my sister Shelby. I could never forget all the things my mom has done for me, Shelby and Amber. All of our mother-daughter days, going to the movies, having lunch, going shopping together, all of our family trips too, like going to SeaWorld, Legoland, the zoo, or even out to dinner. She has also helped me get through school and getting good grades. She opened up our home to my 15-year-old cousin that stayed with us for his spring break. She took him to SeaWorld. We watched movies every night. We had a great time. She is just a very generous, loving, and kind mother, daughter, and aunt. There have also been several nights where my mom has comforted us. For instance, there was a fire in Oceanside, and Shelby was so freaked out she would not stop worrying, and she would not go to sleep due to her autism. So my mom sat in a rocking chair in the middle of the hallway and sang to Shelby. And she may not have known this, but it soothed me too. I really never noticed her issues because she is so compassionate, generous, and kind. And most people say, I'm just like my mom. And once in a while, it's hard to be like her because she's so clumsy. Well, so am I, but I've gotten used to it. It's just a part of our disability. Anyway, like I said, people think I'm just like my mom. Sometimes hard to talk to, compassionate, giving, caring, and most of all, mothering. But I'm proud to be just like my mama. Oh, but still not done yet. I have a lot of complaints about Shelby's foster home. First of all, Shelby never knew that well as what the word whore was a bad word. She didn't even know what sex meant. And sorry for being so abrupt, but you guys, I'm really worried because I know that Shelby got this stuff from Annie's 16-year-old daughter. Oh, and I wanted to point out that our Casa Lolly, who was there that day when Shelby said all of this stuff right in front of her, and what did she do? Some of you have, ha have asked, nothing. All she said was, Shelby, you know that's something that you do when you're married, when you love someone. And I'm pretty sure Shelby didn't know what she was even talking about because she never even knew what that word meant in the first place. Although I hope she does now. I would like to also t talk about the grandmother because I know she is not certified to watch Shelby and that's against the law. So that's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Shelby also showed up at two of the visits with bruises and I asked her where she got them and she that was one on her toe she had said I dropped the drawer on it so I said okay I could see that because it covered her whole toe then she kept switching the story and saying she stubbed it in the door then going back and forth from those two stories like she was trying to cover up for somebody the next visit she wouldn't tell me what happened at all so I've been mad ever since oh wait scratch that ever since she left. Shelby also said that the grandmother took her clothes and threw them all over the floor and told Shelby to pick them up. So Shelby said she talked back and said, you picked them up, you made the mess. And then the grandma said, no, you did. So I haven't heard anything more about that. Shelby also told me that when she wants to go buy jeans and Annie's daughter doesn't want to go, they don't go. But yet when her son wants to go play laser tag, they go. And Annie even said herself, she knows Shelby does not like the enclosed place, just like that she does not like elevators because she is going to get frightened and scared due to the autism. That's stupid too because she's just going to waste her money and time. Just a few more things I would like to mention. One being most of all, you guys, quote, and you know who you are, think I parent Shelby. Well, you've got it all twisted because sure, I've cooked dinner when my mom was sick and I do my chores and I help her cook and clean, but I do not, and I mean I do not parent Shelby. 
I will admit there are times when I wished I could parent her because she gets on my last nerve, but I tolerate it. And I don't want to repeat myself one more time to get it through you guys. But she capitalized, I do not parent my little sister. Two, I would like to make it very clear to most of you, me and my mother do not have any problems. And I think I know it was who said we do. But I'm not going to say any names because I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, we do not need therapy together or separately. We have the perfect relationship. Even in one parent households that we have been raised in for more than seven and a half years, we still have a mother that loves and cares for us beyond measure. Other than a two parent household where there's often drugs, alcohol, and sexual abuse are influenced on the children. Where in this case, my mother has never influenced anything on us. Today, on 8-2909, I saw Shelby and was so excited to see her, but then I looked at her and there was a rash all over her body and on her arms, really bad on her cheeks and her ears were really inflamed. This is what happens when she eats the wheat and gluten. When she was about five, I believe, she had the same kind of rash because of eating the food that was bad for her until my mom put her on the diet. So I said, Shelby, what is this? Has Annie been feeding you wheat? And she said, um, a little bit, just a little bit. And then I said, Shelby, you're not supposed to have wheat at all. And then she didn't say anything. And then again, I said, all of this in front of Lolly. So I thought she would do something, but obviously not. So all and all, I am very upset with this whole entire system because I've said this before to most of you guys, you are just taking advantage of Shelby and myself because of, her, uh, of our autism. Some people are even trying to take advantage of me too, but I am way too smarter than that. Trust me. So like I said in the beginning, I just want to go home, please.